right, for our Comparative Lives project, we were tasked with comparing the organisms of the perch and the polysiphonia. Perch taxonomy. Its domain is Eukarya, Kingdom, Animalia, Phylum, Chordata, Class, Teleostai, Order, Perciformes, Family, Persidae, Genus, Perca Linnaeus, and Species, Perca Flavesens. For the Polysiphonia, its domain, Eukarya, Kingdom, Plantae, Phylum, Rhodophyta, Class, Rhodophysae, Order, Ceramialis, Family, Rhodomelisae, Genus, genus Polysiphonia, and Species, Polysiphonia acuminata. First is the reproductive system of the perch. In the female, a single ovary lies, lies on a midline in the body cavity, just above the alimentary canal and below the swim bladder. This ovary is enclosed within a membrane. In this membrane, fertilized eggs enter a central cavity within the ovary after escaping the follicles and then are covered in a gelatinous substance. The eggs are then shot directly from the ovary to the outside of the body. For the male, within a perch male, a pair of testes are located where the ovaries would be located in a female. A single duct arises from the end of the septum near the posterior ends of the testes. This duct, also known as the vas deferens, transports sperm from the testes to the ure urethra where it is discharged out of the body. Fertilizations of eggs by sperm are very similar to that of humans. And as you can see with the fish dissection, where the eggs are located, that is the ovary. This is a female um, perch and where that, uh, the testes would be located, right where the ovary is. So the reproductive system of a polysiphonia. Polysiphonia is a heterothallic, which means that is that it requires two individuals of op opposite sexes to reproduce. It is also an oogamous form of reproduction, which means that it consists of a mobile male gamete seeking an immobile gamete. Male reproductive organs on a polysiphonia are called sperma, spermatogia, spermatogia, and female reproductive organs are called the carpogonium. The spermatogia are, are produced on fertile branches and changed into spermatium, which are also non-modal cells. The wall that encloses, encloses them, sperma, the spermatogeal wall, ruptures and sends the spermatium downstream to the carpogonia. The carpogonia, also produced by short female fertile branches, the, par the paracentral cells are produced by the basal cells and produce a carpogonial initial. A carpogonial filament is then produced through transverse divisions along the carpogonial initial. One cell of this, on this filament is sent into the carpogonium and then attaches a singular cell into its basal portion. A short sterile filament is formed by supporting cells and a single layered covering and is produced around the carpogonium by means of the division of the paracentral cells. For fertilization of two gametes to occur, the sperma spermatium needs to fall on the upper elongated neck of the carpogonium called the trigone or tri trichogone or trichogyne. <laughs> the wall of the trichogyne dissolves, allowing the neck of the allowing the spermatium to enter the carpogonium and it makes its way to the basal portion. Fertilization is complete when the formation of a diploid nucleus that later divides into two nuclei. So to compare the two reproductive systems of a perch and pilus polysiphonia, these two reproductive systems are similar to in that they both require a male gamete to combine with a female gamete for fertilization. They are also similar in that they are both heterothallic organisms both the perch and polysiphonia need two individuals in order to perform sexual reproduction, which is the opposite of a homothallic organism, which can sexually reproduce by itself. These two organisms are different in the structure of the reproductive system. 
male gametes in the perch are made in the testes, which is similar to many other multicellular organisms, but the male gametes of the polysiphonia are made on male fertile branches. I will be discussing the digestive system and the nutrition of a perch and polysiphonia. So the perch digestive system, it works very similar to humans. As you can see, if you can follow through the fish digestion that I put in the slide. Um, so humans clearly don't have gills or gill rakers, but their digestive tract are overall very similar. Um, so the food will start through the mouth and then it will go through the, the ripped apart by the teeth and then it will go through the, the gill rakers. So it, then it will follow down to the pharynx. And then as the food goes down the esophagus, it'll go into the gizzard where the food is further broken down. And then the food then travels to the stomach where much like the human digestive system, the food is then broken down for, and has its nutrients extracted. Um, so the food's then mixed down with acids and to break it down. Um, right before the intestine, the perch has a small tube called the pyloric cachea, which it's finger-shaped and its function is to secrete the enzymes that are active in the intestine. Um, it's also considered important because it neutralizes the acidity of the partially digested food. Um, then continuing, the nutrients from the food are absorbed from the intestines and transferred to the rest of the body, like much, much like other animals. And then... The excess food, the feces, is then passed out like the fish, fish's body through the rectum, through the anus, also like a human. Um, the perch's diet, what do they eat? So their diet is very mandated by their environment. Um, between the months of August and January, they'll eat insects and worms. And between the months of February and June, they will eat other fish. And you're wondering why, why between different months they have different diets. Well, that's because the perch are a species of fish that are commonly hunted. So the majority of their diet comes from fishermen during fishing season. So during the off seasons, perch need to rely on their own hunting skills. But during fishing season, they usually get other insects, worms, and um, fish from the hunters and the fishermen. Um, the nutrition of polysiphonia. Um, they don't really have a digestive system. So this red algae depends on photosynthesis to produce food and because of their longer light waves, um, polysiphonia will graze on other fish and other organisms um, deeper in the water so they can survive. Um, that's, how, that's how they survive. They graze on other fish and other um, organisms deeper down and they'll receive the nutrients from those other organisms. So comparing the two, um, Clearly, perch have a digestive system and polysiphonia does not have a distinct digestive system. So that's where they differ and, and it causes different digestive and different nutrition for both of them. So I will be talking about the respiration of a perch. So the perch, like most other fish, have structures called gills. These are used in diffusing the oxygen in the water throughout their circulatory system. The perch has what is called a closed circulatory system, meaning that the blood contained within the perch is within closed vessels and organs, just like humans have. This kind of circulatory system will require the oxygenation of deoxygenated blood. The perch does not use its mouth to bring in air down an esophagus like we do, per se, but rather it pumps water over the anatomical structure known as gills. Some fish must stay in perpetual motion in order to keep the water flowing over its gills. But the perch and many other kinds of fish are able to kind of swallow the water through its mouth, which ends up passing over the gills, achieving the same desired result as the other fish. This allows them to not have to move constantly like some other fish species do. Gills act as a start of the res respiratory process. They are where the water is pumped through, giving vital oxygen within the water to the fish. The direction of water flow along the fish's gills is called countercurrent, meaning the direction of water flow and the blood flow within the perch are traveling in two opposite directions. This opposite flow causes the gas exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide between the water and the blood, respectively. 
The oxygenated blood is carried to various parts of the fish before the blood eventually returns while deoxygenated and ready to pass through the gills and be oxygenated once again and continuing the process. The perch have also developed an organ called the swim, the swim bladder, which is used to control the buoyancy of the fish and is able to act as a primitive lung function in some fish. Although this organ is not a strict member of the respiratory system, it can still function as an important organ, allowing for the breathing of the fish. It is usually filled with gases, primarily oxygen, which is why it can be considered part of the respiratory system. So for the respiration of a polysophonia, although polysophonia is an aquatic red algae, its respiration is similar to that of a common plant. Although photosynthetic, photosynthetic plants are usually green due to the chlorophyll, polysophonia is red, despite also having chlorophyll. This is due to the polysophonia containing a pigment called bicobilin, bicobilin, which makes the algae appear red instead of green. So although this is not a green plant per se, it does carry out photosynthesis. This is aided by the red pigment due to being able to absorb green and blue light that regularly reaches the deep ocean water where this plant thrives, whereas other colors on the spectrum do not reach to that level of depth. Other colors on the spectrum of light generally do not reach to the depths where polysophonia are located, causing the polysophonia to adapt and be able to better absorb the light that does end up reaching it. So for the similarities and differences, for the similarities, while perch and polysophonia are extremely different organisms, they still have some similarities. The most obvious similarity is the fact that the perch and polysophonia are both aquatic multicellular organisms meaning they both live in bodies of water and consist of more than one cell. This means that the way in which perch and polysophonia breed has been adapted to the aquatic, aquatic environment that they live in. Some major key differences is the location of perch and polysophonia habitats. Polysophonia is generally a saltwater, saltwater organism, whereas the perch are generally freshwater. This means that both of their respiratory systems have been adapted to their environments of freshwater and saltwater respectively. The respiratory system of a perch relies on a network of blood vessels to bring oxygen throughout the body of the perch, but the polysophonia relies on photosynthesis for oxygen and energy. Lastly, the polysophonia does not have any blood vessels to transport oxygen throughout the algae, which explains why each cell has chloroplasts and makes its own oxygen in each individual cell.